Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Lethal Weapon. So, in this episode, it's kind of interesting because obviously there's a parallel between Cole's story present day and his situation in the past. It's kind of interesting because like, it seems like his mom was like a photographer, so she ended up moving around a lot and Cole ended up going with her. Granted, we don't know about his dad, but at the very least we get introduced to his mom in this situation, which... It seems like that that fits the narrative of this episode, but it seems like that could be something we potentially see go for because Cole is still kind of an enigma. We don't really know a lot about his past, so it's going to be interesting to learn about that. Um, it's kind of interesting because, like, remember when he first met Natalie, he said, oh, he was a photographer. And it's like, oh, because he pulled that from his mom. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, oh, that's pretty neat. That's kind of like a nice little detail to pick up like that, so... But it seems like they always moved around a lot, so he was never in one place for too long. And I guess you could make the argument that's, I mean, I guess that's why the CIA was kind of perfect for him. And maybe on some shape or form, maybe subconsciously that affected him. That maybe that's why he had a hard time ever just completely settling down just because, not just the CIA work, but also just because there's a part of him that's just not used to it, sitting in one place for too long, calling it home. Because he's so used to kind of, you know, traveling around with his mom and that being his home, you know. So we don't know whether, like, you know, something negative came about that whole situation. And, you know, like I said, maybe something actually happened or maybe it is just kind of like a subconscious thing that it's happened without him knowing. But obviously... At the uh, motel that he's staying at, Cole is friends with a dude named Oscar. He's an ex-con. And this dude he was talking to ended up being involved in a robbery while the other person got away. So all of it points to Oscar. But Oscar's got his son, Sam. And he's saying, like, no, no, no I've changed. You know, I'm not trying to jeopardize, you know, anything, you know, taking me away from Sam. Because it's a situation that, you know... As dads in a particular situation is trying to make up for lost time, I think, you know, that's what really cements it in Cole to, like, you know, try and do all this for Sam and Oscar because it's like if he can make it happen for them, maybe he thinks he can have it happen between him and Maya. It's actually kind of sad, too, because of the whole situation with Natalie. Even Natalie was telling Maya to kind of have lower expectations. It's a kind of messed up thing to say, but, I mean, it's to be fair, it's Cole, after all. And even Maya's talking about the fact is that typically the only time she ever really spent with her dad was, like, a, you know, see him, like, maybe once, like, every Christmas and something like that. So... For him, it's for her in particular, it's kind of hard to have higher expectations. But for him, it's like, no, 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 I'm going to make this the best Christmas to kind of make up for all the Christmases I missed and stuff like that. So he's trying to make sure everything kind of goes off without a hitch. But obviously this happens and everything. I love Oscar ends up crashing into his hotel room and she's and he's like, nah, we'll we'll be OK. It's a little bit of mess. We'll be able to pay, uh, clean it up. And even like Gus, the dude at the motel is like, man, this is so messed up, Cole. They're kicking you out. They're talking about your chaos magnet. He's like, well, I've been told that before. But he's like, no, it's not fair. You're such a good stand up dude. You don't deserve this. And he even gets Cole a new room later on because it's like, if you're kicking out my boy Cole, I will quit. And you like, you know, uh, you won't get someone cleaning up this place. I guess he's really good at his job considering the fact is like the owner of the place took that offer. So I was like, oh, that's pretty sweet. And Gus, Gus is the man, dude. I love it. It's kind of cool having like a uh, super fan like that. So it kind of works out for Cole in that regard. But it's interesting. The entire case itself is revolving around, for one, it's like the whole Bailey and Louisa get a uh, dismembered body. Turns out that dismembered body is ultimately connected to the case, but we'll kind of talk about that in a little bit when I kind of talk about their situation this episode. But it was all about robbing a currency. Uh, what's the word exactly? Either way, basically they were stealing stuff and it ended Interestingly enough, with Roger beating up a, a Santa in front of a whole bunch of people, and everyone's just looking at him, he's like, I even love that the literal dialogue of, Santa's got a gun, was dialogue in the episode, because the guy that Oscar, I mean, Oscar, that um, Roger was fighting, and he, all the parents are looking at him, but not just the parents, everyone nearby is looking at him like, what the hell? And he's like, this guy started it first as he's arresting him, so... Luckily, everything, they captured one guy, Cole took out the other guy because he had captured Sam. And I thought that was kind of a nice little touch where he was getting Sam to focus on, like, okay, do you trust me? 
if you could close your eyes and be wherever you want to be, where would you be? He's like so in Hawaii with my dad and trying to keep him calm and allow uh, him to be still while Cole does what he needs to do. It didn't flash back to it because it was like obviously that was kind of more a resemblance of his um, situation with his mom in a regard of like her saying the same thing to him, you know. To, you know, it's like, okay, where do you, want, where do you see, uh, you know, or, or that perfect place uh, when you close your eyes? And it, it just kind of reminded me of the whole situation with, you know, the boy and why, like, Cole ended up leaving the CIA and all that. It just kind of reminded me of that, too. But it, it's a different circumstance. So, like, it's not, like, one-to-one. But it's just kind of something that immediately comes in the back of my head about that situation, too. But nevertheless... Because what motivated Cole to kind of do this even more is because, for one, he knows Oscar was innocent, but also because he had failed before when it came to the Omaya situation. He didn't want that complicated situation to be kind of repeated with Oscar and Sam. He did like he wasn't trying to take that away from a, someone else because he had already taken it away from his daughter. He didn't want to take it away from someone else's kid in that same regard. So that's why he was pushing to handle the whole Oscar situation he did. So I thought that was kind of a nice element to it. I also love the whole situation, like kind of going back and discussing everything else. For one, there's the whole Louisa and Bailey situation, like Louisa hanging around Scorsese. Her being like, for, for one, her being super excited, like, yeah, we get to put this body together like it's a puzzle. And even Scorsese's like, you're a little weird. And she's like, yeah. And so Bailey's like, you know, you don't have to be nice to Scorsese. She's like, nah, he seems interesting. So... And then, you know, Bailey's like, well, you just learned the hard way, which Louisa's like, yo, I like the hard way. And you can tell it kind of bothered Bailey on some level because the thing is, Scorsese's always been into Bailey, but Bailey's always kind of rejecting him. And, he's, and she even talked about like, yeah, Louisa, you should do that. But Louisa's like, nah, I'm, I'm going to spend some time with him, see what's up. And I'm like, yo, they're kind of getting all like together and stuff. And you can tell it's kind of bothering Bailey to a certain extent. I think it still doesn't register in her brain by the end, like why it really bothers her. But what's interesting, though, is like, it seems like Louisa was really hanging around him, maybe because she was kind of into Scorsese. I don't know whether it's more than a friendship thing or not. I was thinking it was kind of hinting that way. I thought at the end she'd be like, okay, you were totally right. Maybe I was thinking that. Or she, the other possibility could be that she'd be really into Scorsese. At the end of it all, like, because she's like, no, nah, he's actually pretty dope. He's, you know, an author. He's got his own line of socks. And he's really into you, she says, as she smiles and kind of walks away. So it's like, it seems like, you know, which, you know, like I said, the whole thing about Scorsese really being into Bailey, I guess, like, when they were together, he talked about her a lot, I would assume. But I, I don't think Louis is trying to make moves on her. I think it's just kind of, like, buddying up. Because, I mean, so far, the only person we've seen her kind of interact with a lot is Bailey. That is her partner, after all. But I think, like, the whole thing between them, I think maybe that's supposed to... I don't know, maybe it's just her getting more friends or something like that at uh, at work, I guess, is kind of what that's all about. Or maybe it is more, I don't know. But you did have Bailey kind of looking at Scorsese, and he's like, what are you looking at? She's like, I don't know. Because maybe that's kind of supposed to be hinting at the fact that she's starting to look at Scorsese from a different light, kind of realizing, like, actually he is kind of amazing. Or maybe it's just because it's supposed to be her being like, nah, you're not someone, like, I could look at, like, in that light, in that way. I feel like that might be the direction you're heading with that, but it's hard to say. But um, I think it kind of has opened up Bailey's eyes to a certain extent. Like It's definitely going to be interesting to see where things go on that front going forward. There's also the whole situation with Avery this episode. He's super down and depressed. I love it just because it's like... It's like... Because Roger's inviting everyone to this party... And then it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Avery's like, I didn't get invited. It's like, well, you usually go off to Wyoming with Todd. I was like, well, do you see, is this Wyoming? And Cole's like, no. He's like, exactly. And it's like, is something going on with Todd? It's like, oh, now you're interrogating me on Christmas? And it's like, okay. So turns out Todd and Avery, uh, Avery, jeez. Avery are having issues, and I love while Roger's preparing everything. Trish is like, no, we got to listen to Avery. He's in, you know, he's going through something. And then Roger's like, if he's really into going through something, he can, you know, you can listen, he can, you can listen while he chops so it covers up his tears. And you have Avery and Trish looking at him like, what the fuck? What? That, that was cold hearted of you. I thought that was kind of neat. That was funny in a very messed up way. I thought it was kind of neat. 
But the whole thing is, like, because in Avery's mind, it's like, oh, Todd, he's so disappointed at me because I lost the campaign and stuff like that. But ultimately, he ends up realizing it. You know, he's like, oh, no, I'm the one that messed up because I've been so hard to live with because, you know, after losing that campaign and everything, kind of going, like, rather than going forward, ended up going back to where he was before. Obviously, it kind of sets up in his mind of, like, you know, he probably didn't really realize how much of a downer he's been or just how irritable it's made him. So, you know, Todd went to Wyoming without him and stuff like that. He tried to make it seem like it didn't bother him, but it did, so... It was sweet that Cole gave him the ticket at the end. He's like, oh, man. He's like, yeah, luckily for you, I work with the CIA, so I got a whole bunch of points. And Avery's like, oh, wait. He's like, no, you're riding coach. And he's like, oh, okay. You know, Avery's like, coach is good. So I thought that's kind of kind of a nice situation there. Because even him being like, oh, it's Christmas on the outside, but it's not Christmas here. Oh, no, this is just like any other day. Like I said, he was super pessimistic. You never see Avery like that. That was like the first time in the entire series like that. I thought it was kind of pretty neat. Uh, I say neat, but just, just more so like funny in a messed up way. But on the other side of things, it's the whole RJ and Roger situation. Roger setting up this whole thing, inviting a whole bunch of people, turning RJ's return into a big extravagant thing, which is interesting because we end up finding out like, oh, the Costa Rica thing did happen. So he is studying, you know, training like to be a coffee bean situation that's like oh yeah so he is going forward with that because the last time we saw it, it's like oh yeah he forgot his he didn't set up his old passport situation uh so i think it was like whether he forgot to get it or whatever or it expired and he didn't you know get it recertified or whatever so it's kind of like he couldn't go but it seems like oh so he's coming home for the holidays and everything but roger being the way he is kind of is extra hard on rj and ends up chastising RJ for, it's like, oh, you picked the wrong date and stuff like that, you looked at it, take it the wrong way, it's kind of like, basically calling him an idiot and stuff like that, which Trish was like, stop, but RJ's like, if I'm, you're gonna just, like, yell at me, I should probably never come back home then, and he was like, well, maybe, I guess there's a moot point now, because you're not coming home, but at the same time, it's like, you know, Trish kind of chews him out for it, because it's like, you're trying to hold him to such a perfect, you know, Standard and the fact of the matter is he's entitled to mess up and it's like if you keep pushing him like this Eventually he might get to the point where he doesn't want to come home and Roger, you know constantly tries to apologize But he keeps screwing up because he kind of does his thing where it's just kind of like he's so his own way about things And he's like no 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 I didn't mean to say that no way to erase a voicemail until you know You have Cole taking the phone and being like hey RJ, your dad's super sorry about all that he's done. It's just you know that he loves you and he misses you, so that's why he's acting like a jackass. Which even Cole's like, yeah, it's easier, you know, talking to someone else's kid than in his own, which is kind of, that whole situation is kind of sad because you know how hard it is for him. Because it's like, how do you talk to your kid about really apologizing for all that you've missed over the years, you know? So it's just a hard situation that he's trying to kind of get accustomed to. But RJ still comes home in the end, and, you know, Roger, you know, kind of learns from Trisha, like, yeah, kind of go a little easy on him, allow him to make his mistakes, you know? It's like, if it wasn't, like, if you had your way, RJ wouldn't even know how to ride a bike, but he's like, yeah, but come on, what, what kind of, what, like, why would we let, why do parents let their kids get on these death machines on two wheels, you get so close to a car and get hit and everything? She's like, I know, I know, I love him too, you know? So I thought that's pretty neat, but it's like, RJ be like, nah, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do timeshares. And R Roger's like, you know timeshare? That whole thing's a Ponzi scheme. He's like, no, no, no. I met the right, this guy. And it's like, Trisha's like, here we go again. Which is like, uh, side note, are timeshares never a Ponzi, Ponzi scheme? Like, it always seems like that's a, some scam or something. Like, timeshares in general, are there legit ones? Because every time you see that come up in TV shows, I've never come across that in my personal life. I mean, I'm now that I've kind of said that out loud, it might happen now just because I put that out there in the universe but it's just kind of always see that in TV shows and movies and stuff like that timeshares and stuff like that but is that never a scam is that, is that like a legit thing too it always seems like it's always a scam it seems like it is one apparently in this situation so which is kind of interesting kind of plays into why Roger kind of gets so mad at him a lot of times because it's like no 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 you the whole point when you go into Costa Rica was about this situation but now it's like no you want to do something else this whole timeshare thing I mean to be fair he's at the age where it's like you know 
no, he doesn't 100% know what he wants to do with his life. I mean, to be fair, still in that stage, even for myself, which is kind of sad to say at my age, but it is what it is. Everyone's constantly in that stage of like, oh, what, what, what am I, what are my plans for my life and my future? So I, I can kind of get that. And you can also understand like why Roger's so hard on him, just because he loves him and cares about him, and that's just kind of his way of doing it. Because he's being very protective. He just wants the best for his son. He doesn't want his son to get hurt in any shape or form. But it's like, yeah, you got to let your kids fall and get hurt sometimes and make mistakes because if you don't, they can't grow, you know? So I mean, it's kind of a nice lesson in a sense for the episode. So, but uh, overall, I'm very interested to see, you know, where potential, like I brought up earlier, the whole situation with Cole's mom, whether that really comes back in any shape or form, go we might kinda of learn more about him going forward with that. Uh there aren't that many episodes left this season after this. It's only four, because there's only supposed to be thirteen. I don't know if like I think I think it's like thirteen for this season. Just because it's a shorter season in certain regards. So I, I don't I don't know. We'll we'll kinda of have to wait and see how like the rest of the season plan uh plays out. But I'm very interested to see uh, where all this takes us going forward. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.